Hello, my name is Keith Rucker. Today uh, we're back on working on the Greenleaf Shaper spindle project uh, that we started on a couple of weeks ago when we made the uh, mounting arbor uh, that this will screw onto. So this is uh, made just like the part that's on the machine uh, that this uh, shaper spindle uh, screws onto. This is for a wood cutting shaper. Uh, this will turn, uh, you put cutters on here that spin around that have profiles and what have you in them. So we're making one that is uh, three quarter inches in diameter. Uh, and like I said, it will screw down uh, on this piece here. So this piece here that we've made in the last video uh, will be what we use to uh, test uh, this end down here uh, when we start machining it on this new part. And we'll also use this as a mandrel to turn the part on uh, once we get uh, the female part made here. So today we're going to start working on the female end of the new one. I have a piece of uh, metal chucked up here in the lathe and uh, we're going to get started on uh, uh, machine this out, uh, boring it. Uh, it'll have to be um, uh, threaded on the inside, internal threads, uh, again to match this. And uh, once we get that done we can turn it around and uh, machine the actual spindle part. So let's get going. Uh, we're going to get started by just coming in here and facing this off and then uh, we'll punch a hole in there to uh, get that to the right size uh, to do the internal threading and uh, get all that machine down the insides. So you saw me getting to use my new inch and a quarter uh, number four Morse taper uh, taper shank drill. Uh, thank you, Guy Lopes, for uh, sending that to me. Uh, that's been a, that was a huge time saver. Uh, uh, really, I, I need to get some more of these bigger sizes. Uh, you know, that, that's one reason why I've been looking for some of these is because uh, uh, the biggest drill bit I have normally is just a one inch drill bit, and it's a little short one that fits on a half inch shank. And uh, anytime I'm doing any kind of uh, boring where I need to bore something out, I'm having to start at, what was having to start at one inch and work my way up. So I've got to go to inch 400 thousandths in here. So uh, with having this, just punching it through the drill bit uh, is saving me an awful lot of time. And again, I need to, to find a few more of these larger sizes uh, uh, to, to help me with this. And also the, the added depth, which that wasn't a big deal in this particular task, but uh, you know, you just got a lot more rigidity with this and you do a little small drill bit, uh, which is why I like these uh, taper shank drills so much. So thank you, Guy, for, uh, for uh, uh, sending that one along as a viewer appreciation gift. Okay, now that we got a uh, hole punched in there, uh, we're going to go ahead and bore this out to uh, one inch 400 thousandths. And I've just got a, a little boring bar here uh, just sticking out just long enough to get that job done. and. Uh, so we'll get this done. We should be at an inch and a quarter right now. So we've got a couple hundred thousandths to, uh, to get this done. One inch 310, so I got 90 thousandths to go. I'll take 80 on this first pass and then we'll measure it again and uh, take a light cut on that final pass there. And I have an indicator mounted down here on the lathe uh, to tell me where I, where I need to stop at on this. All right, we're right on the money, about two thousandths over, uh, but that's going to be good enough for this internal thread. I'm happy with that. All right, we need to get a flat bottom in this. Uh, in the bottom of this bore. So what I'm going to use is this counter bore uh, to just go in there and uh, 
hopefully just take it right down to the bottom and get the, uh, the, the taper out of the bottom of that uh, drill bit and the roughness in the bottom of this hole out. That's my plan. We're going to see how this works. Hopefully you can see that in the camera all right, but we got a good flat bottom in there now, uh, just like in the original. Uh, there's a center hole in the bottom of this, and uh, anyway, I'm happy with that. So uh, uh, I'm, I think we got the bottom flat. That's what we we're after. All right, I want to kind of get you, show you what we're after here and kind of show you the game plan of where we're going. So this is just a sketch of what the bore is going to have to look like um, when I get through. So I've got it, everything bored out to 140 thousandths, or one inch 400 thousandths, excuse me, right now, uh, diameter. Uh, but when you look in the original, you get down here in the bottom and it actually opens up. Uh, to about 1.565 in the bottom for about 150 thousandths deep and uh, and then you got this area here this is the area that will be threaded uh, to fit up on the spindle and then on this end it goes back out to 1.565 uh, and this right here will actually come up on the shoulder on the boss on the on the machine part the, the, down here in the bottom this is just basically some clearance and uh, to give our threading tool a place to go to and run out down there uh, so that when you screw up, screw, all, screw it all the way on, uh, you've got some clearance in the bottom. So again, we've got everything bored to, the, to this diameter. So what I'm going to do now is I'm basically going to come in here with a boring bar. I'm going to touch off in the very bottom of the hole and then using uh, some dial indicators, I'll feed my tool out. Uh, we've got to go, uh, I got to move it about 80 thousandths total uh, to get that uh, on the indicator, move it toward me 80 thousandths. And then again, using an indicator, I'll go 150 thousandths out. And I'll just cut this little uh, piece back there in the back uh, using my boring bar. Uh, once that's done, then I'm going to come in and we'll use the boring bar again and we'll uh, bore the front side out uh, to this diameter here. Uh, but I just did kind of just want to show you a little picture of uh, of what that hole is going to look like uh, so you can kind of get an idea of what we're doing next. So we'll go in and, and bore this back step uh, in the bottom of that bore now. All right, you see my setup here. What I've done is I've touched off in here and basically got a zero for just touching the edge. And I'm in about 10 thousandths right now just so that it's not turning. But I got the zero set to zero. Uh, where I'm just touching the inside of the of the bore. And then I've also got a zero set here uh, for the depth at the bottom of the hole. So because I can't see what I'm doing, I'm blind inside of a hole, I'm going to have to rely on my indicators to tell me. If I had a, a DRO, digital readout on my lathe, I could use that. I don't, so uh, we're, we're using dig, uh, dial indicators here uh, to tell me what I need to do. So here's the game plan. Uh, I'm already at the bottom. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed the carriage toward me about 40 thousandths. I'm going to move it over 100 or move it out at 150 thousandths. I'll then go back to zero and then come in another 40 thousandths for a total of 80 thousandths uh, actual, which that will of course uh, be twice that diameter um, in the in the bore because it's cutting it on on both sides as it's turning around, uh, and then basically do that again. And that should give me my step back there in the back. That's the game plan. Uh, so, so here we go. All right, here I go. We're going to pull this in 40 thousandths. And then I'm just going to watch this dial and we'll, uh, I'm just going to do this by hand. hundred thousandths, 150, we'll go back to the bottom of the hole, right there, and we'll go another 40 thousandths deep, okay, and again, come out. 150,000. All right, that 
should be it. Okay, now we're ready to bore the top of this. Uh, similar to before, I have a dial indicator here set. I need to go a half inch deep, and the uh, final bore size needs to be uh, one inch, 565 thousandths. got this set up for internal threading so I've got a lay flat threading tool in here that's on a for internal setup for internal threading so I'm like a little boring bar almost except uh, it's got a threading insert in there and uh, we're doing nine threads per inch to match uh, uh, the little spindle nose that this will fit onto which is a copy of what's on uh, the machine uh, we'll use this for test fitting so uh, I've already got everything set up. I've already done a scratch test, confirmed I'm cutting nine threads per inch. I have an indicator down here uh, set that will tell me where I need to stop because I can't see the bottom of this hole. And if I keep on cutting in there, I'll hit the bottom of the hole, which won't be good. So I have this to tell me uh, where I need to stop that threading at. Uh, so basically internal threading is uh, done very similar to uh, external threading. Uh, the most notable difference is, is the, the compound lathe is turned back in this direction. For external threading, you have it set on a 29 and a half degrees going in in this direction uh, because we always want to cut on this leading edge uh, when threading. We have to turn the compound this way. And of course, instead of feeding in, I'll be feeding the compound out toward me as I make my cuts. So uh, we're ready to go. Uh, and uh, we're going to start making some internal threads here. internal threading now uh, you can see up inside the hole there the threading that goes back we got a shoulder on the front here which uh, uh, will actually engage onto uh, this little shoulder here on the spindle and this all goes together now screws up on there it engages that machine surface on the bottom and there snugs up tight so uh, we're happy with that Everything looks good, so uh, we're ready to take this out. We'll flip it around, and we'll actually use this uh, to uh, turn the rest of this on. Uh, but before we do, before we start turning that, I am going to go ahead and mill a uh, hex uh, into this, where we can put a wrench on to this part here uh, to take it on and off. That's just like the original, and uh, we'll do that over on the milling machine. So we've got everything on the internal part done. Now the next thing to do is, is as you can see on this piece here, they've got a hex uh, built into this where you can put a wrench on there. That's a fit for a two inch wrench. So we need to make that uh, hex two inches across. Um, so anyway, I've got this set up in my self-centering um, uh, vise. And uh, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and, and uh, touch off right here. Uh, according to my calculations, I need to cut about 155 thousandths uh, off of each flat. And when that turns it around, it should be two inches across from there. Uh, so I've already got my depth or the, the length from the end to where the edge of my cutter needs to be, which is 700 thousandths. Uh, so again, we're just gonna touch off right here. We will, um, 
feed down 155 thousandths, uh, cut a slot across, and then uh, I'm going to rotate this in here and using uh, an angle plate here and just a, uh, a 3060 uh, angle here. So this is a 30 degree uh, angle uh, plate out of my set. So it'll be 30 degrees on one side, 60 on the other. We're actually wanting to move this 60, but that's a 3060 triangle. Uh, so we'll just come over here and measure that angle with this. Now, ideally, um, you know, I would use something like a um, uh, a super spacer or, or an angle, or excuse me, a dividing head to, to turn this to get a little more precise. Uh, I just don't have anything set up to do that right now. I, I really need to find myself a, a, a good super spacer to do this kind of stuff. But uh, for now, you know, we're going to do it the poor man's way, which is just doing it this way. Uh, and for something like just a wrench to go on, this, this is usually adequate. Uh, not quite the level of precision, I, you know, it would have to be for some applications, but for just putting a wrench on there, this is going to be adequate. So that's how we'll do that, and uh, you can watch us as we move along here. that uh, I measured that and we're just a couple of thousandths under two inches which is really right where I wanted to be to have some clearance for a wrench to come on there I don't <coughs> I don't have a, a two inch wrench here that I could put my hands on but I did measure them with the calipers so we're right on the money where I want to be and you know let me just say a little bit about the setup here too because this is just uh, to goes to show you that where there's a wheel there's a way and in a machine shop there is really no just one way of doing something. Most machinists would say, oh, you gotta have a, a super spacer or a dividing head to do this. I don't have one, so I improvise. And uh, you know, I'm just using a, uh, a simple angle block here uh, to measure off of. And you know, the first one's always tough when I do that because you're measuring from the top and you don't really have a good seat on there. But once you get that first one done, you can set that right in that angle and uh, you can just feel it when it fits right on there. Uh, you know, again, the precision level of this is probably not the same level you would get with a super spacer, but for just getting a, a wrench on here to be able to take this on and off, this is good enough. A super spacer and a rotary table or a rotary table, something like that, is on my list of things that I'm trying to, to find and acquire for the shop, and I will eventually get there, and one day you'll probably see me doing this uh, with a little bit better setup, but for now, get her done. Thank you. 